Do you find it difficult to learn and remember Spanish vocabulary? This has been incredibly difficult for me throughout my Spanish learning journey to achieve and especially with Spanish food vocabulary. Now this has been very frustrating because I always wanted to have long conversations about food in Spanish, but I just could not remember enough vocabulary. However, since the beginning of this year, I've been learning a lot of new Spanish food vocabulary and very easily. I've been learning words like tacaria, jalisciense, uh, gorditas, tripas, pozole, pollo en mole, menudo, chicharrones, chicharronitos, y birria, y birriera, birriera. Bi birriera. That one's really hard for me to say. <laughs> birriera. Algo así. <laughs> I've learned and remembered these words by going to taquerias once or twice a week and talking with the uh, meseros y meseras, the waiters and the waitresses, and I would be talking to them about the food that is there. So sometimes I would be asking them, ¿Qué me recomienda? So what would you recommend me? And then also I like to ask the question, ¿Cuál es su platillo favorito? So what is your favorite plate? And then of course I have to ask for my food, but sometimes I have specific questions about the food, like ¿Qué lleva este platillo? So what does the specific plate have? Like what type of ingredients and you know, what does it have? Does it have meat or does it have lechuga or lo que sea, ensalada? And también uh, also I like to ask eh, ¿Qué tipo de carne es eso? So what type of meat is that? Also, what I have been doing is reading the menus while I'm there before I actually ask for the food that I want. And then I end up taking pictures of these menus and then I look at these menus even when I'm at home. And then also I've been reading the different signs that I see up on like the front door of a taqueria or the different signs that are actually within the taqueria. I've been thinking about all these words throughout the day. And then also I speak to myself a lot in Spanish, of course, <laughs> with all these words that I've been learning as well. And I've even made a video where I just talked about a taqueria visit that I had and the food that I was eating. Now, what is one thing that you notice about these different methods that I'm using? I've been getting an incredible amount of exposure to this food vocabulary. So as I just mentioned, I've been hearing these words, I've been reading them, I've actually been writing them down in a notebook as well. I've been using them when I speak, I've been thinking about them a lot. So this has been helping me just remember and getting these words to stick in my mind a lot. So as you can see, I'm getting different types of exposure and that makes all the difference in comparison to just having one type. Now, I don't know all the science behind this, but what I do know is that getting all this exposure helps out a ton. So let me give you an example. On, let's see here, March 10th was the first time that I ever tried uh, El Platillo Jalisciense. So I know that because I wrote it down in my little notebook here. So before I actually went to this taqueria on this day, I had no idea what this plate was. I had pretty sure I never saw this word in context. I never heard it before. If I did, I did not remember. So let's say this is the first time that I've ever exposed to this word, jalisciense. So I saw it on the menu and I was like, oh, I have no idea what this is. So then I went up to the waitress and I asked her, you know, que lleva este platillo? And then she told me. Well, let me back up a little bit because when I did ask her that question and I tried to pronounce that word, I, I couldn't. I probably got like the first few letters correct. I was like, Halis, 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 and then, but she knew exactly what I was trying to say. And then she's like, oh, Halisciense. I just kept rehearsing that in my head. I'm like, okay, Halisciense. It's, it's un tipo de bistec. Okay, Halisciense, Halisciense. And then I actually got my food, right? And then I saw it. I saw what ese tipo de platillo lleva. I saw what uh, what this plate actually came with. You know, it's bistec, arroz, and probably, or more than likely, ensalada or algo así. And then I had a mental picture of this plate as well. So I wrote down what the plate was, what the ingredients were, everything that was in the plate. So jalisciense, bistec, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and then I had the mental picture of the actual plate, but it does not stop there because since then I've still been going to taquerias and I see that plate on the menu. So I've been seeing this plate 
over and over again on the menu, but then also I've been telling my friends about this verbally and through text messages as well that I just tried this new Mexican dish. So Jalisciense has been on my mind for almost a full month now, and I can tell you that I know that I'm not going to forget this word. But as you can see here, this also has to do not just with all the exposure that I've been getting, but also the repetition and the length of time. But this is very different if I just only thought about it and only got exposure on that first day. I think food vocabulary is a great way to show you the effectiveness of using these methods of exposure. And that's because, of course, when we think about food, right, we're talking about plates here. We're not just talking about one thing, but just one name of, let's say, lengua, un taco de lengua, it comes with different things. If I talk about tapequeña, it comes with different things. It comes with arroz y frijoles y quizás uh, tortillas extras, como tortillas de maíz o tortillas de harina. So there's actual, actually multiple words that I've been learning with these plates. And not just the name of the plate itself. And to add on to that, since I've been speaking to waitresses about the different plates and also reading them on the menus, I know how they are used in context. So now I know if I want to ask for a specific, a specific taco, I'm going to ask for un taco de, so un taco de lengua, or un taco de pollo, un taco de camarones. I wish I knew this a few years ago when I was struggling so much, but I guess that is just a part of the learning process, right? And also I know that I can use these methods for basically any type of vocabulary. So not just food vocabulary, but one specific other type of uh, or topic in general that used to be very difficult for me was different types of materials. So, you know, like cotton or stone, brick and things like that. I attempted to learn those things, but I, for me at the time, it was just like too difficult. So I just stopped doing it. Basically what I did to try to learn these words was just go on to a specific website and I would just go word by word for about 10 minutes uh, for a few days a week. So I would just go, okay, wood is la madera. Wood is la madera and marble is el marmol, okay? Metal is el metal, but that was it. So I wasn't actually writing down these words at all to get that exposure. I wasn't practicing the pronunciation of these words. I wasn't thinking about these words throughout the day. I wasn't trying to create like a, a mental image of what these materials actually look like so I can match it with that word. And I definitely wasn't speaking to anyone about these words at all. So I wasn't getting that verbal practice and then I also so wasn't really hearing it that much. Now, maybe you're saying to yourself, well, Joshua, I don't have the same opportunity that you have. I can't just go to a taqueria or a Latino restaurant and just have conversations with Spanish speakers or go anywhere and have conversations with Spanish speakers because there aren't anywhere I live. My answer to that is that you do have the same opportunity, but it just comes in a different form. So I definitely believe that you can do all these different things, get all this exposure from the comfort of your own home, especially with technology these days, it's quite simple. So you can definitely just listen to a YouTube video, or listen to a podcast that is about a particular topic or uh, vocabulary that you are trying to learn right now. And then you can also write things down yourself <laughs> in a notebook or in a Word document. And then you can also practice throughout the day. You can be thinking about these words. You can be speaking to yourself about these words all in your home. Those are just a few ways and there are many ways to get exposure. So this is exactly how I am learning and remembering Spanish vocabulary. I know that it will help you as well. Let me know in the comment section below if this actually has been helping you already. Thank you very much for watching and watch this next video.